I'm your host, Kaylee, and this is Rebel Wellness. You've just tuned in to Rebel Wellness, the podcast that's here to revolutionize your approach to personal health and well-being. I'm your host, Kaylee, also known as Coach Kales, and I'm thrilled to have you join our Rebel community. In a world that's saturated with fleeting diet trends and unrealistic beauty standards, we believe it's time for serious change. Our mission is simple yet profound, to empower women like you to break free from the confines of today's diet culture and embrace a holistic approach to health that's sustainable for the long haul. If you're like me, you're here to embrace the concept that true well-being encompasses every facet of your life, mind, body, and soul. Rebels believe in aligning our journey with our individual needs and values because a one-size-fits-all approach just simply doesn't cut it anymore. This podcast is your safe space to explore the depths of wellness guided by myself, experts, real life stories, and genuine commitment to your growth. You're here to begin your transformative journey, and it's time to discover your own version of balance in your health. Every week when you tune into Rebel Wellness, we'll learn, grow, and rebel against the polarizing outdated norms to finally achieve lasting vitality and joy because that sounds pretty great, right? Your journey starts now, and I am so excited that you're here. Hello, lovely. Welcome to the final week of Hot Take Summer. And if you have been following us this entire summer of 2023 and all of the hot takes, um, this has just been a really great time for me to kind of hit all of my hot takes on the hottest buzz topics right now. So if I didn't cover something that you really wanted to hear about, or you've been hearing about more, I would love for you to submit your thoughts and the topics to either my Instagram at coach by Kales or the podcast Instagram at rebel wellness podcast. I would love to hear what you want to hear more about, because I'm not going to just end all my hot takes and only do them every summer. But I do plan to keep this series going every subsequent year so that I can kind of tackle hot button things that everyone wants to hear about. Because as we know, a lot of it shifts year to year and it's kind of hilarious in some ways, some of the stuff that comes back around. So yeah, it's been a great time. And that is what I wanted to say as far as if I didn't hit any topics, because I know some of you might be a little bummed that this is the last episode of Hot Take Summer. But with that said, if you would love to be part of our exclusive newsletter list, go join us at coachkales.com. Or you can also sign up through my stand store and get some nice freebies like a really awesome macro grocery list that I put together for you guys um, on stand.store backslash kales. So I would love for you to come join and be the first to know exclusively about all of the awesome stuff I have coming down the pipeline, especially for you. All right, so we're going to wrap up this series with one of the hottest topics, the hottest topics. It's been actually a very key part of my business and research and coaching in the last like four years or so now, partially because it's been very personal to me and it definitely, my experience drove me to understand as much as possible about this topic so that I could better help my clients understand and make the choices that are right for them in this zone on their own or together. And I will say that easily this is the best, the biggest game changer for a lot of us. Like those of us who were born anytime from the 80s forward, we are the first generation to have this for long term with our health. And so what I'm going to talk about today is birth control. And this is a very, very touchy topic for some people because I know depending on your religion or how you were raised, this could be kind of taboo or it could also be something that you were never given the option to change or to think of differently. So I do want to make sure that you understand as we go into this chat that I'm going to be sharing my personal experience, a lot of my clients' personal experiences and various things that I have studied and learned and read that are from modern feminine science. So this is nothing to do with old fashioned teaching because there's a lot of modern science coming out in regards to birth control and better understanding what is it actually doing to the female body, especially long-term, that is very important for us to learn and understand and chat with our 
healthcare practitioners and each other about. Sometimes I'm going to get a little bit into where it gets tricky with conventional medicine doctors, especially because since most of this science is younger than 10 years or this more published science, it doesn't mean that it's not true. It just means that really only in the last decade or two, we've started to care more about feminine wellness, as a lot of us know, especially if you've been keeping up with anything in the science and health world, such as nobody had really studied keto on female bodies because female bodies are never hardly studied because we cycle and we are too much of a curveball with how our hormones shift around all month long. So scientists never prioritized using females for studies. Therefore, a lot of the research behind a lot of different diets and things like that did not follow enough females to make a conclusive standpoint or guideline for females specifically. So that also comes into birth control. If you have had any family members who have experienced being written off for symptoms, or even if yourself, a majority of my clients who have came to their conventional medicine doctors, that's your PCP, that's your general practitioner, et cetera. They, the people that are basically covered by insurance, unfortunately, they are going to kind of write off your symptoms, say like, oh, on this side effects list, that's not listed on there. So it can't be because of the birth control. How many of you have heard that? Because I've heard that for myself many times, and I've heard that for a ton of my friends and clients over the years, and it's really disheartening. So this hot take is so passionately important to me, as a lot of you know from following my social media or coaching with me in general. It's one of the first questions I ask because I've realized how important it is for us to be fully aware of all the implications that long-term birth control use, especially those with artificial hormones in it, what it can do to your body and how it can impact everything from your mood to your sex drive to your liver health and therefore your hormone health, which could also make you massively stubborn with body fat or an insanely fast increase of body fat gain. There's so many things that are caused by this. So if that's something that you are very interested in and you have an open mind to welcome to this topic. This is going to be a really good chat. And I would take notes if you can, especially to look into it for yourself to become more mindful. So I do really encourage everybody who listens to this, who is on birth control or who has taken birth control, especially hormonal oral contraceptives to really explore the potential symptoms that are after effects of taking it for so long or current effects because you're taking it or you have an IUD and it's the Mirena or the Skyla or any of the ones that have localized progesterone, those also have major health implications because it's still a fake version of progesterone. It's progestin rather. And um, they are very, very, very equally problematic. Uh, so I'm going to get into all of that. So if you want to hear what I'm doing now personally, what's worked the best for me, what's worked really well for my clients, and a little bit of a care game plan to detox off birth control and get your health back, get your libido back, get your clarity back, get out of a depressive state, get out of an anxious state. Those are all things that can come from detoxing off birth control. So 10 out of 10 recommend you listen all the way through this one and it's a good one, all right? And I'm also gonna share some of these really unique situations that I've read about in literature and through the work of doctors like Dr. Jolene Brighton and various other doctors, uh, Dr. Stephanie Estima, who are fantastic feminine health leaders in the medical world for researching and learning more nuances to females' bodies, specifically in regards to birth control as well. So something that is interesting is they have talked about these things and I've seen them play out for clients. And there's something that is really worth you understanding and being aware of in case it happens to you or has happened to you and you were just dismissed. All right, so let's slide right in. So First, I'm going to briefly kind of just chat about all the different kinds of birth controls. I will kind of grade them in the terms of like efficacy as well as implications on your hormonal health. So how it'll affect your body potentially negatively with the exception of obviously pregnancy. This is going to come from more of a scope of less about specifically trying to just get pregnant or not be pregnant because you should Definitely, I very much encourage you to view birth control more than just preventing babies. I know that is exactly the name, birth control. But at the same time, as we get more connected to our body and understand how things work and how our body works, it can be really empowering to better understand that it's not scary. It's not hard to prevent pregnancy naturally. 
And it's something that pending your own personal values, including your religion and things like that. I'm not trying to overstep any of that area. So of course, come at it with whatever scope is best for you. But I do know that the more women I speak to who are the most scared of getting off birth control or just don't understand their birth control in general, it's truly because they don't understand their body. They don't understand their fertility. And so the major move towards what's called the fertility awareness method, it used to be called the family planning method, is that you becoming very, very aware of your own personal fertility gives you so much power back to taking care of yourself and preventing pregnancy naturally because it's absolutely possible. I have been doing it for four years now as an adult female and using contraception on the days of my fertility and not using it outside of it and being completely fine. No scares, no plan B needed, anything like that, because it just simply is not a fertile time for me. And I know it's not because I have learned my body. I have learned my cervical mucus. I have learned my temperature changes. I also have an aura ring, which is very insightful for understanding those things because it also takes my temperature changes as well as my sleep quality, which does interact with your fertility, with your ovulation, with your coming into luteal phase, etc., as well as cycle tracking. So I really want to talk about cycle tracking as well. If you missed all of those episodes um, in the beginning of when I launched this podcast, those are great and they're very informative, but I'm going to give you kind of a little mini series here today about my top tips for it because I want everyone to feel more empowered and understanding about their sexual health and birth control abilities, because we've done a great job nowadays of completely putting up smoke and mirrors on something that has been innately a feminine superpower for thousands of years before now. And because Big Pharma is wanting as much consistent income as possible, no way around it, no matter how you feel about that, it's just something that is best if they can keep putting all of the females on birth control. And there's not to say that there are all bad things about it. Like I'm not a birth control hater. I am only just coming from the scope of how I've seen it negatively impact my female clients and how it's very easy to make a different choice, move away from it, heal and feel the best you've ever felt in your entire life from getting off of birth control, just from being scared and uninformed the way that all birth control propaganda kind of goes. And at the same time, birth control has been very empowering for people, um, especially when it came out. I know it was a huge game changer, especially like Summer of Love. That's the time frame of when it became more widely available to or women, the estrogen was off the roof in those birth control pills. There was, that was a whole different thing. They were still figuring out like, how much do you need? Or what's the bare minimum to make sure that it's effective. And unfortunately there was a lot of women who dealt with negative side effects of getting fake estrogens in super high doses. And that's where we get a lot of the background of um, women having cancerous issues and people still do to birth control pills nowadays, but it was way worse early on in the seventies, eighties because they were still figuring out formulations and amounts. So that is something that was kind of a double-edged sword because women were able to love more freely, were able to go explore around more with less concern about getting pregnant, which is amazing and empowering until they were on it long-term enough to start getting the negative side effects of it. And so this is where it might be useful for for you to understand how to better understand your own fertility, make your own choices, and um, know the side effects that are going to come with you going on it. And it is something that you could maybe go on for a little season of life. Maybe you want to be single for a while. Maybe you're in your uh, early 20s and you want a few years where you're a little bit less concerned about it. That could be a good time to go on birth controls. But at the same time, I know so many women that have spent their entire 20s not on birth control, have completely prevented pregnancy, never had to use plan B or anything like that, and have uh, completely well-rounded understandings of their bodies. So that's really important to understand as I talk about these different types of birth control is that it's not something that you actually are forced to use. And I have used many of them. And yeah, let's actually talk really quick about like my story. Why did I become so well understood (laughs) or well versed on um, birth control. So I spent a lot of years trying to find the best possible option with the least risk, especially when I was younger, because like my grandma always kind of warned me, you know, like don't get pregnant early because uh, you have a lot going for you, you know, 
that has kind of been changed with the modern life. We have had a lot more females be able to simultaneously continue with their careers and lives professionally with also having children. But there are a lot of statistics where technically, yes, a lot of women have a harder time moving forward with schooling, degrees, careers, etc. when they have children early on. So for me, I was always like, well, that's for sure not in the cards for me. I have a lot of big dreams, big goals, you know, I'm a very ambitious person. <laughs> so I wanted to find uh, the best birth control possible for myself. I wanted to find something that had the best efficacy so like the highest rate of success and the easiest usage. So fortunately, I didn't have bad periods or anything like that. So I didn't start contraceptives until I was about, I believe, maybe 16 to 17. Because I do know that um, it wasn't because of becoming sexually active necessarily. It was more so becoming uh, for like, it was like what you did. It was something interesting. It was like my parents more so wanted it. And everybody else was getting on it because everybody was so concerned of their kids getting pregnant. You know, yada, yada. that was my personal experience. This was in like the early 2000s, like um, 2008 through to 2012 or so. And so I was like, okay, let's first just try with um, the progesterone shot. <laughs> so <laughs> AKA the depot shot. Uh, this was a huge mistake. I thought it was going to be really easy and nice because the way they kind of marketed it toward me talking about like, oh, you know, it's just one shot every three months. You're completely protected. La la la. All this stuff. They didn't tell me that A, it was going to make me batshit crazy. My mood was all over the place and I'm a very level person. So that was obvious. And it was obvious it was from the birth control because it started after the first few weeks after I got the shot and it ended after I got off the shot. I fortunately only did two rounds of the shot because then I was, my dad actually was trying to teach me, this is where it came to a head. I realized that something was way off with me and I wasn't going to deal with it anymore because my dad was trying to teach me how to drive manual because my mom was trying to give me her car at the time for school and it was manual. He was trying to teach me it and I just couldn't, like I couldn't control my mood. I was anxious. I was all over the place. I just like would stop and stall out the car and wave people around me instead of try again. Like it was a whole bunch of behavior that was so not me. And it became very apparent that for sure it was the, the depot shot. So I told my doctor about it. I had a male doctor at the time and he was like, oh, that's kind of weird. I doubt it was the shot, but um, sure, let's try something else. And so he gave me the options of either oral contraceptives as pills, which is like a daily pill you have to take. You know, um, there's oral contraceptive pills that are both fake estrogen and fake progesterone. And then there's progesterone only pills. There's a lot less efficacy for progesterone only pills. So I was more interested in the double protection type, which ended up not being for the better. But Anyways, and then, uh, or he said IUD, and then he explained the IUD to me. I said, that sounds horrible. <laughs> Please don't put something that shouldn't be in an organ in my organ. That's basically how I viewed IUDs. So I went with the birth control pill, and it started to slowly shift a lot of stuff for me in a negative way. I didn't realize that um, it was impacting my absorption of nutrients for quite a while, and I got really thin in not a healthy way. I do not want this to encourage anybody to go on it as if it were a diet pill. Cause a lot of people get the opposite effect, like with the depot shot or the pill, oftentimes they gain a lot of weight. So it, I personally um, have viewed that where your hormones are at before you go on one of these fake hormones influences how your body reacts. So if you are in a position where you don't, where you have balanced levels, maybe you stay in those same kind of levels, but then you start to deplete because Oral contraceptives take you away from cycling naturally. So even though you bleed, that is a ghost bleed. It is not a real ovulation bleed. There is no egg that ever ovulated. That's why it has estrogen in it and progesterone. It keeps an egg from ovulating. And then the progesterone keeps the mucosal lining in your uterus to thicken. So it prevents implantation. And then you have this ghost bleed, which basically is just helping you shed lining. But that doesn't make it at all the same as natural ovulation. That is really important to understand because all of us, even clients that are older than me, 
when I tell them about this, they have no idea. They thought they've always been ovulating because they've been bleeding. Just because you bleed does not mean you ovulated, okay? But back to that. So it was those pills or the IUD. So then I went with the pills and I got really thin noticeably and I wasn't under eating on any purpose. I was getting into like health and fitness more, but I didn't realize that my body was not absorbing all the nutrients it needed. I didn't realize it was due to the fact that I had this constant fake dosing of fake hormones for so long. At that point, it was maybe three or four years in, it was early college, and it was just starting to show up in interesting ways for my body. And I remember like my dad pointing out like, oh, you look like really thin. Your face is kind of sunken looking like you, he was like, you, you look better with a little more fat on you. It just like, obviously everybody has their own opinions about like parents making comments, but it made me more aware that like, Hey, maybe I'm like too thin right now, you know, in an unhealthy way. And I also remember one of my best friend's moms having made a comment to her later that like, Kaylee looks really like thin right now. Is everything okay? You know? So it was kind of the type of thinness where it wasn't like a good look. It was like something was off, but I had no idea that it was correlated to my birth control use. I just thought maybe I just wasn't eating enough or I was doing too much, you know, all that kind of stuff, especially because every time you go to like your doctor about stuff and you ask, they're like, oh no, that's not a side effect of the pill. So it's something else in your lifestyle. And I can't tell you how many clients of mine have gotten that reaction from their doctor, unfortunately, because a lot of the doctors, they are not taught this in medical school because it wasn't something that was studied. It wasn't something that was effort studied. If you don't know this already, a lot of scientific evidence has to be published, peer reviewed. It takes a four to six year process to get your findings published and then put out into like medical journals and taught takes like 10, 20, 30 years. So that's why conventional medicine is so far behind in a lot of modern science. It doesn't make modern science wrong. It just makes it that it's going to take a hot second until it gets actually practiced and taught in the medical field. So it's up to your doctor, your practitioner to stay up to date on modern science for especially feminine health. And if they don't, and if they're not open to it, that's a red flag. That is find a new practitioner, find somebody who specializes more in feminine health. And that's again, why I always tell everybody you need to have a functional medicine or naturopathic doctor in one corner of your life. And then the other corner have your conventional medicine that runs with insurance because insurance is sick care. It's emergency care. It covers you when you go through a car crash or a big surgery or various things like that, or your day-to-day shots. And then the other side of medicine is ordering proper testing and all of the things that are actually going to help you get to root cause situations in your life. Because upstream medicine is functional and naturopathic medicine, downstream medicine is conventional medicine. So I just want you to understand that fully because it will change your life when you have a more comprehensive healthcare team. So back to birth control story here, I did that for several years, um, more than several, honestly, I think I actually first got off birth control in 2017, I believe, because I finally was out of like long-term relationships and date some dating. And I was, I was, I mean, I was dating, but I'm not the kind of person that sleeps around personally because um, I find it to be a special interaction with somebody that I don't want to be like you, it lose, it started to lose its meaning. The more casual intercourse I had with other people, if that makes sense. And I know that this is kind of like personal stuff, but at the same time, like it's worth talking about because we need to be a lot more open about these conversations because for so many years, we keep this stuff like under wraps or close to the chest and it's harming other women and younger women, especially because they're not learning from our stories and our experiences. So that's why I'm going to be open and honest about it. So <laughs> if it makes you uncomfortable, then, then you can like double tap and skip through some of it, but I'm not going to get too into all the information. But anyways, for myself personally, I don't like to sleep around a lot, especially too, because I was a business owner already at this time. I've been a business owner since I was 21. So I had a lot of integrity and self-respect for what that could mean. Not in the sense that like, if you sleep around a lot, you don't have self-respect that can go many different directions. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that it was important to me to not be known for that because I was for a while dating a lot of people in the industry. You know, Um, there's people that I just really didn't want to like make some weird name when I (laughs) broke up with them because I am usually the breakupper. (laughs) I'm not the breakup E. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, those are kind of like my thought process of why I wasn't really sleeping around and I was always careful. But at the same time, I decided I started feeling like my 
body fat was very stubborn. I was a health and fitness professional, like nutritionist and fitness professional. I knew exactly what to do to get to a body composition that I wanted. However, I couldn't. And I was like, well, what's the one variable that could be holding me back? Maybe it's my birth control. So sure enough, I decided let's just detox off of it. I'm not sexually active really right now. And I think it's time I get these fake hormones off my body, (laughs) you know? Little did I know this would spring me into what's called estrogen dominance. So basically what happens for everybody who doesn't understand estrogen dominance or has heard me talk to them about it and wants to know a little bit better of how this happens with birth control pills, it goes like this. You're taking an estrogen pill every day and you're stifling aka or stopping ovulation in general. What happens in ovulation that is extremely important for the female body is we get this inverse of natural estrogen and natural progesterone. We need them both because both are besties. They balance each other out. When estrogen is dominant, aka the only hormone that's in play, which is what happens when you don't ovulate because after you ovulate, it stimulates and kicks off progesterone increasing in that latter half of your cycle, the luteal phase. Progesterone is the calming hormone. It does a whole bunch of other things for your body including thickening of your cervical um, lining for nutrients if you had an egg that ovulated and got implanted by sperm to grow because it's basically like nourishment for the egg to grow in that part of your cycle should you have gotten fertilized at that point. If you did not get fertilized, it just basically thickens and then sheds. It's still important though for a whole bunch of different hormonal reasons and reactions in your body. You need progesterone for that balance. When it gets out of balance, you didn't ovulate, you didn't stimulate progesterone because all you have is all this estrogen in your body and you didn't ovulate. So it didn't trigger that shift into progesterone after ovulation. You're just creating estrogen, right? So it's estrogen, estrogen, estrogen. And then it gets into this big imbalance where your progesterone levels, your natural progesterone levels, not progestin. Progestin is actually not used in the body the same as progesterone. It's kind of in there to fake it out. So it'll help the lining increase, but it doesn't have the effects of what real progesterone does in your body. So, and that's a fact, um, check out fantastic book beyond the pill by Dr. Brighton that will really describe everything for you there. I'm just going to try to do my best to kind of layman's terms it and summarize it right now. So basically we have this huge amount of females out there, including me who didn't have progesterone enough in ratio to my estrogen. So what did that mean? That meant this timeline correlated to when I graduated college finally and jumped full term into my business only. So this is a stressful time, right? This is when you graduated college, when you're still looking for a job, even if you work for somebody else, massively stressful, right? You're trying to get your feet under you. You're trying to actually start to make an income now to support you for the rest of your life, potentially, right? For me, it was that. However, I was the one creating the income for myself because I was an entrepreneur, because I was about to start my own thing or continue my own thing because I already had started my business while I was in college. So this was a scary time for me. My cortisol was off the charts. I also had estrogen off the charts. And my body was starting to detox, but it was still in this very imbalanced state. That meant estrogen and cortisol are besties that deposit body fat and cause inflammation. So (laughs) over the course of three months, as you guys have heard the story, I gained like 23 pounds of body fat and I was super puffy. My face was red. I didn't look like myself. I had like a little double chin thing going on. Stuff that I had never had in my life before because I generally was very active and consistent with that and good with my food majority of the time, etc. So I hands down know for a fact that I was experiencing what happens and what is considered estrogen dominance post birth control detox. This is something I've also seen happen for a multitude of my clients as they detox off birth control, especially my clients that have been on birth control almost their whole life, like since they started ovulating in when they were 12 or 13 or 14. And this is so important to understand, especially if you're somebody who went through something like that, that absolutely changes a lot of your body's hormonal cues and levels in your body and your function of your different organs, because they are hundred percent affected negatively by long-term fake hormone usage. And as I've seen across platforms where more women are speaking out about this and learning it for themselves and experiencing it with their clients or their friends or their family. 
um, it's been very good to see that this is starting to spread. A lot of kids that are in their teens right now are actually avoiding birth control because they're seeing a lot of this informative chat from professionals about okay, maybe consider not doing this, maybe try doing fertility awareness method more, you know, different stuff like that, maybe just use condoms and fertility awareness, you know, things like that. So anyways, coming back to it, that is where I first started to be like, well, what is going on? I need to get a hang on this. I was doing everything in the book, fitness and nutrition wise, try to manage it didn't work. It didn't work. And that's the thing that's really complicated is that unless you know what is going on, you can't just try to diet the crap out of yourself and exercise to the moon, literally, and your body won't respond because your hormones are out of balance. Your hormones determine if you even go into your fat stores. So people who just say it's calories in, calories out, do not understand that it gets really complex with some of these specific metabolic disorders that a lot of us females and people in general are facing these days for a multitude of reasons. But the old saying that like, oh, it can't be your hormones, that's such an excuse. No, it's a real thing. And I hope that that hearing that is empowering to you so that you better understand that a lot of cards were stacked against you if you are somebody who did take birth control for longer than three years and um, are experiencing really stubborn belly fat or really stubborn lower body fat, you know, your thighs and your glutes. So we usually see um, estrogen dominance, body fat patterning as a lot of fat deposited in lower belly, hips, glutes, thighs. That is a very clear sign of estrogen dominance when that ratio of fat is a like more proliferative above that 40% body fat zone, depending on how tall or whatnot you are. If that is you, there's a good chance you might have too much estrogen in comparison to your progesterone. So there's a lot of different things. And if you um, want to learn more about that, I have some episodes coming down the pipeline that are going to talk a lot more about hormone balancing, but it's important that you understand that this is a hundred percent influenced and will influence, um, your body in total from fake hormone usage and detoxing off of it. So do know that that is massively correlated. And the other thing is belly fat. If you have a lot of belly fat out of the normal range, if you are a very stressed person and you are estrogen dominant, this is a perfect storm for belly fat gain. Cortisol is usually the main perpetrator for belly fat in general, like too much cortisol in excess to, again, balancing back out. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that is really important to understand in that zone. That's not just like, oh, you're not doing something right with your food or this or that. And then at the same time, too, that is a part of it that is challenging is that it can make you crave things more. It can make you have really horrible periods, especially anything estrogen dominance will give you worse, heavier bleeding, more cramps, more headaches, more nausea. You know, all of those symptoms are signs that you are out of balance. So how did that, how long did that take me to get off and rebalance, right? That's probably your first question. So I, as I started learning more about it and practicing those, the habits and taking the supplements, such as like replenishing my B vitamins, um, taking care of my magnesium, taking care of all my electrolytes and minerals in general, and eating as many cruciferous vegetables to help me detox the excess estrogen. There's a natural supplement that is a, or it's a chemical that is involved in things like broccoli and other uh, brassica vegetables. And that is DIM. I have several clients that take this consistently. I took it consistently once I learned that it helps you take excess estrogen out of your body naturally. Um, and so I do tend to recommend that for somebody who does get with the guidance of their practitioner or a naturopathic doctor, et cetera, to try taking DIM for several months to help support better estrogen clearance for those a multitude of reasons. But that one massively helped me out. I really, really gained a lot more um, balance from all of those supplements and continuing a high protein well-rounded diet as much as possible. I wasn't perfect. A lot of you guys know I'm a big foodie. Like that was my old passion was culinary. So I definitely still mix in a lot of fun foods and meals and things like that. And I will also say that I was able to rebalance without being perfect on my alcohol consumption as well. It did impact me though. I will say something that I did notice was when I would consume like American wines or anything like that. If you aren't familiar with how alcohol affects the body, I would go to my alcohol episode. I believe it was episode 33. It's very informative and very important for us females to better understand how alcohol affects us 
neurologically and physically and hormonally. So, um, but wine is also an estrogenic increaser. So I didn't say that properly, but you know what I mean? It increases estrogen in your body. And so that paired with having higher estrogen and then having higher cortisol is usually where you will also see a lot of major fat gain. So I did have to cut quite back on a lot of my alcohol consumption to rebalance myself. But it took me about a year of following mostly better habits, like an 80-20 kind of lifestyle and taking those supplements to replenish my B vitamins, to replenish my um, very important nutrients such as like magnesium, because unfortunately, fake hormones will take all of that out of your body because it's very taxing on the body to process these fake uh, man-made hormones. And it also slows down your liver. So you want to be taking things that support your liver. You know, we'll get more into that in a bit. But anyways, it took me about a year. And then I was off of it for two years and just followed the fertility awareness method. Um, I didn't have an aura ring at that time. So I actually learned through learning what like cervical mucus looked like, knowing where I was cycle tracking and also using condoms around my ovulation when I was with any of my partners at the time. So well, not like I had multiple partners at the time with my partner at the time, one of my exes. So um, I completely had zero risk, zero scares of pregnancy. And it was very empowering because something that you don't know can be absolutely affected by being on birth control long-term is you lose your libido because again, you're not cycling and it throws all the hormones out of balance. And one of the major things that a lot of women get written off about is losing their libido when they've been in this hormonal birth control state or high estrogen state, an estrogen dominant state. So, and because when you don't have progesterone, your mucosal lining and your vaginal wetness, so to speak, <laughs> is lacking. And it also is a sign that you are not interested in sex or any of that stuff. So your body doesn't communicate with your brain that, um, or your brain rather doesn't communicate with your body that it's interested in procreating because it's basically in a state where it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not fertile. I'm not, you know, I'm not in any position to want to be trying to make a baby. So and a lot of libido is like your body's drive for trying to make babies. Cause that's like our primal instinct. Right. So, um, there's probably a lot of different ways I could describe that more, but I'm just going to kind of leave it like that to try to just keep it again, like more layman's terms, but that's something important to know. And I actually experienced that quite a bit and it was very frustrating for multiple different relationships I was in. And I had no idea that it was just because of my birth control. So when I got off birth control and my libido came back like roaring, I was like, wow, so this is what it's supposed to feel like. That's insane, you know? <laughs> so really important. If you uh, value having a libido and having attraction towards your partner and, you know, things like that, it's, it's another area to um, explore with getting off of birth control. So, but let's take a moment, um, I guess, real quick, the other types of birth control are out there is the vaginal ring, diaphragm, contraceptive sponge. Those are kind of weird ones that people don't really use anymore. Like female condoms, people don't really use those. They're they have less like efficacy. They can be a little bit risky as well as, well, vaginal ring is different. That's still kind of the same as the pill, but it's more like a localized. And I did use that actually. I will talk about that in a second. Condoms, contraceptive patches, IUDs, copper IUDs, progestin IUDs is the other one. So that's like Mirena, the one that most people are put on that their birth, uh, that their insurance will cover. And then the Implanon, which is the one that goes into your arm that is progestin only as well. And I really am not a fan of that. Any of the ones that are localized progestin and put somewhere in your body, I have seen so many clients with so many bad side effects of using that long term. So I do not recommend you use any of those progesterone or progestin only types of birth control because they also have a lot of negative side effects such as like um, depression, anxiety, weight gain, mood swings, and vaginal dryness, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff that again is not ideal because it still is one of the fake hormones going into your body and impacting it. So um, I've actually even had clients have z like a zing sharp pain down south and various other things that when she talked to her doctor about it, because I said, you should talk to him about it. Well, talk to them about it. And then later I found out it was him. 
he told my client that, oh, well, we can't put you on an estrogen one or we shouldn't take you off this um, implanon because progest- uh, because estrogen is the pregnancy hormone and you'd be at higher risk of getting pregnant. And first of all, sir, progesterone is the pregnancy hormone. It's the one that keeps you pregnant and helps you get pregnant. So he's first of all, extra off there because when women are in a pregnant state, they're in a progesterone state. So <laughs> that's a clear sign. This was last year, guys. This is a client's doctor last year who told her this. So just just be very aware that your doctor may not be as well informed of the female body and how it works as you'd hope, especially if it's a general practitioner or primary care physician, because a lot of them don't have to know this stuff as in depth because they have to know so many other things about medications and all this other very fine tuny stuff that is almost impossible for somebody to be specialist in the intricacies of the female body. So I do recommend you try to only work as an adult female with female practitioners. And if you could even go further and make sure you vet for yourself, that it's a feminine health specialist, somebody who is more oriented into the female health world and modern female health and more of that by asking the good questions, that is going to be so much more important for you to have. So anyways, those are all the different types of birth control. It's so hard to not go on tangents because this topic is clearly something that I'm very passionate about and want to inform people about. But I would say out of all of them, the least ideal are any of the ones that include a man-made hormone. So that would be anything that's like progesterone ID, progesterone only pill, the pill that has estrogen and progestin, um, and any type of birth control implants because they operate with fake hormones. So those are going to be immediately problematic long-term because again, it's altering your hormones artificially. And I will also include the vaginal ring. So I did end up trying that one because I was hoping that with my current partner, when we first started dating, we were dating, we were doing long distance. It was in the pandemic and it was highly stressful. My cycle was going all over the place, not only because of um, doing long distance. It was hardly because of that. It was more so because of the freaking stress of that year, because I was hustling with my business. I was trying to take care of everyone else. And I was actually faced with this looming question because my grandmother was beginning to pass and she was in California and I was in Oregon. If you've ever wondered why I left Oregon, it's because of my grandma, because I wanted to spend those last, I didn't know if it was going to be months or years with her. And I had spent enough time in Portland. I got everything I wanted to get out of Portland and it was starting to shift. Like Portland is shifting away from like the Portland I knew and loved. So um, I was ready. It was like the perfect storm. And it was still locked down. You know, it was just one of those things where I was like, we don't really know if this world is going to be altered for multiple years because we all thought it was just going to be for a couple of weeks and then a couple of months. And then it became quickly a year. And so I was like, all right, make this choice on the fly. And I know a lot of people were not stoked about that. Or maybe a lot of people had no idea why. Maybe a lot of people thought I just moved because of my fiance, um, my now fiance. But that's not why. It was 100% my grandmother. And I don't regret any of it. I think that if anybody has the opportunity to make a big life change, that will be something that is important to them. I highly recommend you move to family if family means something to you. Um, Especially like people who have big uh, impacts on your life, you know. Because you can always move back somewhere else. You know, it was always on the table for me to potentially move back to Portland if it didn't work out. Um, I fortunately just things progressed very well and naturally with my then boyfriend, now fiance. And so I did <laughs> everything went exactly the way it was supposed to. It's weird looking back at it. And I know that son, a ton of my friends were really sad and a ton of my clients and my client friends and the uh, community in general. And I, I miss them so much, but I see them so often. Portland is so easy for me to travel to. I go up there like four to six times a year, really. Uh, This year, especially more because I've been taking a lot of short trips. But anyways, I digress on that. But because of all of that going on that year of 2020, I was like, I need to get my cycle under control. And I'm going to just see if maybe the vaginal ring because it's localized and I can like remove it here and there, la la la. Maybe that'll be less bad for me than oral contraceptives. This was around the timeline of when I was first starting to learn the implications. After my experience with the ring, I dove headfirst into way more of the science because also too, in those three years between the two timelines from 2017 to 2020, tons of science was coming out 
more and more about understanding birth control on the female body. So it was easier for me to get to a position where I could learn more and I could be intuitive and mindful about the symptoms I was experiencing and know when was like enough. So sure enough, I was on the ring for maybe about a year through the transition of moving back to California and starting the transition of losing my grandmother and like going through the stress of relocating my entire life again. <laughs> Guys, that was the most stressful year. If, if you didn't know what happened to me in 2021, that's why. That was just a shit show of a year, honestly. Not in a negative, not in a fully negative way. Definitely a lot of negative things, definitely a lot of positive things, but just it, it's really hard to explain to you what it's like to be a young female, relocate yourself out of your entire life. Like I had built everything for myself up there on my own and my whole community and then move back here. And fortunately I was able to like replace my business and a lot of my clients followed me, which was amazing virtually because that is something amazing that the, that the pandemic allowed us to explore and then rebuilding a clientele here actually worked very easily because turns out just exactly as I had expected, you know, people need health everywhere. <laughs> And I was already very skilled at my craft. So, you know, if you have a craft with people, go where other people are and it probably works. So, but that year was so stressful for me. And then it came down again. My body responded way faster to this ring and was like, yo, we're not doing this again. And it didn't take me very many months to like experience those symptoms I was not a fan of. I went through going to kind of lower body weight. I was eating food and it wasn't showing up on the scale. And some people might enjoy that thought, but actually it was a red flag to me because it meant that uh, my, something was off with my gut. And then I lost my libido and my mood started going all over the place again. I was experiencing some depression. You know, that could have was a little bit been influenced by my losing my grandmother, but I didn't stop eating like I've historically done when I was younger, when I was going through like trauma. So I knew that the birth control was to blame. Fortunately, because it was a ring that you kind of insert and then take out, I just removed it and detoxed off of it. I followed everything in the book that I knew that was going to help right off the bat. And I prevented going through an estrogen dominant state again. So that was a really ex a valuable experience for me. And that's why I'm sharing it with you is because I was able to go through it the first time and not know what was going on, not know how to take care of it and then heal and then go through it again um, and know how to take care of it, know what to prevent and come out of it without going through 10 or 20 pounds of fat gain out of nowhere. So that was immensely beneficial for my own personal experience. And how come I coach a lot of my clients through this process and understanding that it may not go perfectly well like that for you, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do to prevent that um, experience. But overall, where I'm at now is just reminding me of how much more amazing it is to not be on fake hormones. And it's just, it's so much better guys. It's so much better and learning your cycle and everything. Like, even though sometimes your cycle is a lot more like obvious because you are actually ovulating things. When you get connected to that divine feminine being you are, you start to learn that like society is only teaching us that this sucks. Like it's part of who we are. It's part of being a woman. It's part, part of being a female. And it's part of something that is a balance in your life and in your body that is necessary for you to be the best version of yourself possible. And when we're taking things that mute that or pause that or dull it, any of those things, it's going to make us less of who we can really be. And that probably sounds kind of profound or whatnot, but in my experience and a lot of my clients' experience, it's super true. You know, feeling emotions isn't a bad thing. Having different shifts in your cycle and it going from sexy, vitality, energetic to kind of intrinsic and tired or sleepy, you know, those are all parts of a natural feminine cycle. And they're parts of something that actually teaches us, hey, you do need to rest. You know, this, you can go all crazy and do all the things for the first couple of weeks, but then you need a couple of weeks to chill out and like become intrinsic to take care of yourself, to take care of whatever you need. You know, it's, it's a balance that is necessary. And when we get out of that balance because of it muting our cycle, sure, we can feel like we can take on the world every single week and we don't have any issues during our luteal phase or whatever. But in reality, that's why we have so many people who are wired and tired, burned out, have hypothyroidism or other thyroid issues, adrenal issues, you know, 
so many different things, which is actually what I experienced as well. I have adrenal fatigue because I was firing on all cylinders for way too long. <laughs> it's a kind of a side effect of being like a female entrepreneur, but at the same time, I was able to get away with doing too much for too long because I have this muted cycle that wasn't forcing me to relax and chill and get the benefits of my natural chill hormone, aka progesterone. So I hope all of that was kind of like understandable for you. It's kind of, again, it's off the cuff. So I may not have been as, as perfectly clear in the progression of how I expressed all of that stuff, but I hope it was helpful for you to hear my story and why it came around to how I view and understand different types of birth control and especially hormonal birth control because it affects us way more than we think. And it definitely played a huge part in some of the most challenging times in my life. And even people closest to me, I will keep them anonymous, but like when I've finally encouraged them to detox off of it as well, it's also been not a quick journey. It's usually a one to two year initial detox until you start to get into the more balanced cycling side of it. But the way that fat melts off of them, the way that their mood gets balanced, this is actually for multiple people, people very close to me and people who are also clients who are still close to me. But once they finally got off birth control, it's it was so amazing to see the changes and like a year out, two years out, like I have several very specific clients on the top of my mind that um, we've absolutely seen their mental health change and their physical health change just by finally getting off of this stupid fake man-made hormones that um, their doctors put them on since they were like 13 or 14. You know, it's insane to think that they never, their bodies never got to have a natural cycle, like not even a single natural cycle, like their entire life. And it can make huge mental health implications and various other things like that. And this isn't all just hearsay. This is again, like laid out in all the science that we're coming out with right now. And again, I will plug Dr. Brighton's Beyond the Pill. If you really want to learn all about it, it's completely, completely important to understand your health in this way. So I wanted to make that very clear. And again, I just want to reiterate that I'm not necessarily a birth control hater. I just think that there are other birth control types and methods that are far more supportive of true feminine health in the long term. They're not just about how do you pre prevent getting pregnant? So before I close out this section, I do want to say one more experience that is worth noting that uh, several clients have had from, especially when they've been on birth control through like most of their young adulthood, so teens, 20s, whatnot, is your body isn't always going to follow the specific patterns. You may not actually go through estrogen dominance. You may actually just have low estrogen, low progesterone. You know, there's a lot of different things that can come off of it. There's a great resource, uh, Dr. Tasson. He's the writer of the Hormone Balance Bible, but he also has a lot of different resources out there. He's another feminine health advocate that I think is worth your time following him on Instagram or looking up his resources or reading that book. So you can take this little quiz where it kind of can help direct you towards what situation hormonally you might be in based off of your symptoms, and then it can help direct you through a care plan. So I would definitely point towards like Dr. Brighton's things. If you're going to go off birth control, she has a detox plan, like a 30 day follow this to help you get off birth control much more smoothly and set yourself up for success and also tells you a lot of recommended supplements and things like that. So I'm not personally going to recommend you supplements and everything on this chat, but those resources are great and they are practitioners who are professionals and can give you all of those recommendations based upon your own symptoms and unique situations. So I highly recommend Dr. Brighton or Dr. Tassone for that information. But several clients have had where they got off of it and then I actually meet them later in life when they are going through their body healing from um, all of this quote unquote neglect. It's not like you were intending to neglect yourself, but it was a way that modern medicine neglected your body <laughs> and you took it because you were um, not necessarily informed fully because that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. But now that you or now that they were starting to take care of themselves and learn more about it, they were experiencing what it feels like to naturally cycle and they've never felt that before. So they've never felt bloating. They've never felt period water weight retention. They've never felt a lot of these different symptoms. And it's actually very 
profoundly frustrating for a lot of them because they think like, oh my gosh, I just need to go back on birth control because I hate this. You know, like this sucks. I don't like having these symptoms. I don't like this, that, blah, blah, blah. And I have to encourage you to not be dismayed by those symptoms. They are very temporary. They will get better as long as you're actively working on taking care of yourself through proper supplementation, proper lifestyle routine changes, and nutrition um, and sleep habits, massively sleep habits. So let your body take care of itself. It will detox on its own. And it, as long as you also support it with some of the things that can help support it. And I'll tell you a little bit about those towards the end here. And again, use those resources. They have like really well detailed um, detox protocols, but just make sure that you understand that it's going to be icky at first. You're signing up for that. It's going to kind of suck at first, but it'll get way better. And then it'll be completely better for the rest of your life once you get off of it. And it will help you have a way better menopause and secondary half of your life as us females age and stop cycling. Um, there's way more issues if you hold back your cycle your entire life and then have it for a little bit when you finally get off of it in your 40s and then you go through menopause and your hormones are all over the place. So if you're in your 20s and your 30s, get off of it now. I would recommend that because then you have more time to detox, learn your body, get it healthy again, and then go into those latter years with less complications. But it's very important to know that, like, I'm going to be completely tra uh, transparent about it is it's not a exciting, comfy experience, um, but nothing that is easy is ever worth it. Right. So you definitely want to make sure that you come into that with the right mindset and understand that it's part of the process, but it'll get better. It's just like fat loss. <laughs> Like part of the process is not fun and, uh, but it's definitely worth it in the long term. So you want to get off birth control now, or you want to detox, or you want to recenter because you have gotten off of it and you are wanting to take care of your body better. So first things first, what is going to be your game plan now for your modern birth control? And that will be fertility awareness method. Um, that is basically better understanding how your cycle moves every single month and being aware of that little window where you are the most fertile. That window is anywhere from as small as four days to as large as eight days or sometimes for some women, 10 days. This is why you have to do the most on your own to take care of understanding that very small window. Again, it's very small, but there's some things that you can do to um, optimize understanding it. So some of the important things to know is that your cervical mucus changes every few days in your cycle. And it tells you a lot about what your body's doing in that point of your cycle. So you kind of want to keep an eye on your cervical mucus, which is otherwise considered called discharge or whatnot. You know, some, you'll see it on your underwear every few days and stuff, or maybe every day, depending on your body and your fertility. And so learning what that means, depending on where your cycle is, is very important. Um, I very much follow and use the Flow app for my cycle tracking for short terms. It's safe. None of your data goes anywhere. You don't want it to go. If you read the privacy statement and everything like that, you are completely fine and safe. And if you're very concerned, make yourself anonymous on there and it won't be tied to you at all. However, who cares about you having cramps or bleeding when you started or when you ended? All of the data on track, cycle trackers is very useless because there's a lot of room for error. So overall, when a lot of people started fear-mongering about cycle trackers, it's completely misinforming. It's horrible for women's health because cycle tracking and tracking apps optimize the ability for women to accurately track their symptoms and everything to go with their cycle. So I was very frustrated when all that stuff was going on. I get why it was going on, but the logic behind it was completely flat. They did not understand that like overall your information on there, especially if you make like a fake name and stuff, it's completely useless. <laughs> it's completely useless, you know, and just don't track things that you don't want to track. Like if you're, you know, there's just so many things. I'm not going to go too much into that, but it's a little bit ridiculous because they have way more data on you from your Instagram, your Twitter, your TikTok. And also courts are always going to use your text messages first. This was confirmed by multiple of my lawyer clients when this fear mongering around cycle tracking came out and I asked for sure. And multiple of these lawyers are feminine advocates. And they were like, no, they wouldn't use cycle trackers because there's too much room for error. It, they would have to subpoena it. And 
it wouldn't matter because they would go for everything that's on your public information, such as your social media accounts and your text messages first. So do know that. Very important to understand that because I get it. I get why a lot of people thought that it made sense to stop using cycle trackers, but it's a bunch of BS and it's harming people more than it's helping them because the Flow app and many other apps like that out there have so much amazing insight and algorithms that benefit women and helping like all my clients that use the Flow app and even myself, it's amazing how accurate it is to guessing exactly when I'm ovulating, to guessing exactly when I'm going to start my period. And telling me a lot of amazing insights about like, oh, you logged this kind of mucus or you logged this symptom. This is what it could mean, you know? And so 10 out of 10 recommend the Flow app or any other of these really amazing women empowering apps out there for tracking your cycle. If you're somebody who's just trying to (laughs) be safe, quote unquote, and write it down or something, all of my clients that try to just write their cycles down because they were unfortunately impacted by the fear mongering. They never stay on track with their cycle. And then I ask, where are you on your cycle? They have no idea. It could be as easy as looking at the little app on your Apple Watch connected to the Flow app or on your phone and you'll see, oh, you're on cycle day this, you know, and it helps you stay on top of it. So I definitely want to encourage you to change your mindset if you're somebody who still believes that anything that a cycle tracking app is going to incriminate you or put you at risk because it won't. It's it literally won't. Um, And this is backed by lawyers. (laughs) So um, all of that to say, cycle tracking is very important and you want to track exactly where you are with all your symptoms for multiple months. And then things like the Flow app will start to get a routine on what your cycle looks like, how long your cycle days are. A lot of people naturally have just 26 days. A lot of people have all the way up to 32 and that's a natural menstrual menstrual cycle. It also will give you insight on if maybe you only had 21 days between your cycle that often means you didn't ovulate and that's normal. When people are extra stressed, your HPO axis in your brain reads that and says, we're not gonna ovulate this month. This person is way too stressed. Like they're not in a position to get pregnant at all. That's a real reaction that your body has to stress. So then that's also something that can impact your progesterone levels because if you're somebody who's chronically stressed and you're not even on birth control, you can be not getting those benefits of progesterone and have low progesterone again and be in an estrogen dominant state. So a lot of my clients who are chronically stressed and don't do very well to take things off their plate and work through a lot of the stuff that we talk through and actually implement it into their lifestyles, I will see them go through estrogen dominance cyclically. And especially when their stress goes even higher. So it's very important to understand that you need to have healthy ovulation. Like your, your cycle is your report card of your hormone health. It's something that can be extremely insightful. And that's again, where these tracking apps can be super, super helpful for you because they can give you so much intel and help you become mindful and really in tune with your body's natural ebbs and flows throughout every single month. There are also a lot of fertility tracking apps out there that are linked to different temperature monitors. Things like the Aura app actually have a, um, feature that you can toggle on if you are trying to get pregnant, where it'll change the way that the app looks to help you track your your fertility more specifically. But you can also use just the standard body temperature reading to because your body temperature is going to increase slightly when you're ovulating in that follicular phase. So those first day five through day 18 of your cycle. That is typically when people are the most fertile because that's a right around when they're ovulating. Some people say you only are the most fertile to accepting a sperm with the egg two days preceding actual ovulation day and two and two days after. Some people think uh, it's a really tight window because it is for some people and other people, they can have a larger window. So it is about learning your own body's peaks and valleys of different hormones that are getting stimulated, which again, some fertility apps and testing types of testing strips and different things that can track your luteinizing hormone and different hormones that have a lot to say about where you are with ovulation. So I'm not going to get into that too much, but that is a way that you can basically nail down exactly your own cycle and fertility map so that you can better understand what is your actual window. And in that window, is when if you are not on contraceptives of any type, 
you would want to use condoms with your partner. Do not mess around with like pull-out method or any of that stuff, especially if you just really are not ready for a baby. Be very radically aware of yourself and what you really want. It's not about what your partner wants. I have to have a moment to say, I hate when I hear clients say that they just don't like the the feel of condoms or their boyfriend just really doesn't like the condoms because it's not about them. It's about you. And you going through the after effects of just making them happy for one session around your cycle is really not worth it. Um, It's very, very, very not worth it to go through the pain of having to abort a pregnancy or go through any of the stress of having to go get a plan B. And you really only have a three to four hour window with plan B. And you can really only use plan B contraceptive after your cycle up to three times. And then your body starts to get used to it. That's like an actual thing that a lot of people don't talk about. You can't use plan B more than like three times. And you don't want to mess around with that because again, it's fake hormones. It's going to shift what your body's doing. It's not great, but that's also why your body starts to get used to it and adapt and it becomes less and less effective the more you use plan B. A lot of females don't know that and it's really important to know that. But at the same time, if you are somebody who doesn't know that they have way better condoms out there, you should probably do some research because they have ones that like you can't even feel anymore. Like Lilo Hex is a great one. There's certain ones that you can actually get customized to your partner's uh, willy <laughs> and different things like that, that help the, both your partner's experience and your experience. But overall, it's about you. It is about you. It's not about them in that sense, because there's a whole bunch of other ways that you can get the job done. But if you are risking yourself for pregnancy and a hor- horribly traumatic experience, potentially, if you just because they don't want to wear one or you've been trained as a female to believe that you don't like it or something like that. Or maybe you really don't like it, but maybe you should also just explore other condoms and find what works better for you. Like I just, I I don't think it's ever worth it to just do what makes the guy happy your entire life. I'm just, you know, too much of a female forward <laughs> supporter to say that that's okay because everything is, is in general is usually set up for your male partner. If you have a male partner and <laughs> they can do fine with having four days out of the month where they have to wear condoms. Okay. Like, and then there's other methods too. Like if you just don't ever want to put one on, then do other things those days, you know, there's, there's so many different options, but prioritize yourself, prioritize what is safest for you and your guys' timeline in uh, if you want babies right now or not. Okay. It's just, that's, I have to, I have to share that little soapbox because I can't tell you, it's usually my younger clients. They're usually the ones who think it's cute to say that they don't want to ask their partner to use a condom or they want to act like they like it. And it's just like, no, like it's just a few days out of your month. Just wear the protection, you know? <laughs> and then you go into your luteal phase and you're usually in a safe zone. Again, you need to track yourself and find out what your unique body does. But usually after day 21 or so, it's totally fine and safe to not use condoms for most people and you will be fine. I have never had issues my entire cycle tracking experience and that's for multiple years now. I've had about five years in total fully off of birth control, maybe six at this point and um, never had a single issue, never had a single issue. So learn your cycle and track it. You are, you need to find out how many days you usually are cycling. You need to find out how long your period usually is. And then you need to find out when are you estimated to ovulate, learn how your body feels. So if you track it in a tracking app and you get around to when it says it thinks you should be cycling or ovulating, feel what your body feels like. Some women actually feel a little bit of cramping on one of their ovaries and that's the egg developing and then getting ready to be released. Some women feel specific bloating. Some women get diarrhea. Some women can actually feel their body temperature go up because they get hotter in the night when they sleep. There's a whole bunch of different things that are really important to become mindful of when you want to learn when are you actually ovulating and then it gives you a lot more clarity and accuracy when you're tracking it and then you can find out okay, okay day 20 And on, I'm probably in the safe zone. You know what I mean? I wouldn't really mess around too much earlier in like after between your period and ovulation because you're in a little risky state where sperm they have now found can live in your canal up to four or five days. And so 
you really don't want to be going up to like only a day or two before your ovulation day because there could be viable sperm still up in your vaginal canal. So I personally, this is what I do personally, I told you I was going to tell you, I usually actually just use condoms, contraceptives up until around day 20 because that's just me being very safe and aware and careful. And again, there's great options out there that are not just the stereotypical old-fashioned latex, you know? (laughs) So um, it just really doesn't, it's not an issue for us. And we also both are on the same page. We are not wanting kids right now. So it's more important for us for that, you know? There's a whole lifetime of potentially getting him getting snipped and stuff later on. Like a lot of my clients that are in long-term marriages that are done having kids, their husband goes and gets a vasectomy and they're all done. And again, if we had to talk about that, I would say it should always be the man making that move because we've done way too much already trying to be the ones preventing pregnancy. And in reality, they're the ones who are more of the issue because (laughs) they can get somebody pregnant any day of the month. We can only get pregnant a few days out of the month. So that's my thoughts on that. And it's also very hormonally problematic to get your tubes tied. For most of my clients, I try my best to encourage them to not go and get their tubes tied and just to have their husband get a vasectomy because they are not going to lose their testosterone. It's not going to make them less manly. And it's actually, there's actually a lot of evidence that shows that they can live longer when they don't have this constant flow of excess testosterone because it helps them age better long-term. So that's also something interesting (laughs) to look into if in the future you and your partner want to be careful and want to move away from all types of contraceptives. So those are all options. Those are all random things that I think are worth talking about. But um, I think that I'm pretty sure I have covered as much as possible of what I wanted to chat with today. And um, again, I hope that nobody felt offended by any of this, or if you had any thoughts to share, I'd love to hear them. But it's all me coming from a place of extreme love and care for you, for you listening, whoever you are at any point in your world of uh, birth control prevention or not. I really want you to feel empowered and understand your body better and know that yes, your birth control can be the source of a lot of your issues and it might be. So it's very worth it for you to learn your body, take care of your body, and even give it the option to detox for several years. If Even if you just feel like, okay, I just want to go back on it, give yourself a few years to detox, okay? See what happens to your body. See if it's actually feeling better. See if fat is finally moving off your body. See if your mood is more balanced. See if you're sleeping better you know, see if pains are going away, see if your libido comes back, you know, there's so many things that actually can be directly impacted by birth control use, um, more so hormonal birth control use. And do know that no, you can't just randomly get pregnant at any point of your cycle, that that's a a whole bunch of hogwash. Um, I have heard people say like, oh, but I know this person and she got pregnant and it was not even around her ovulation. I'm like, I'd like to see her tracking and I'd like to know exactly if she knew if she was actually tracking properly, you know, like it doesn't just happen like that. Like the female body has a cycle. The cycles aren't all perfect and the same, but that doesn't mean that they don't follow the same pattern. Wherever you are, however long it is, you're still following a pattern. And there's a lot of ways where you can understand it better. So no, you cannot just sporadically get pregnant at any point of your cycle. That's completely wrong. And that's totally not true. So um, anyways, all right, we're going to wrap this one up. And if there's anything I missed or anything you wanted me to go further in or chat with me, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram at coach by Kales, or you can reach out to me at my website, coachkales.com. And again, I would love for you to come join our newsletter list. I am not a spammy person, so it will be just filled with great stuff and information that is going to support your feminine wellness overall, including some tips and tricks and different uh, resources, and also the information of when I launch some exciting things that are coming. So that is it for today. Share this with somebody you think might benefit from knowing and learning more about their cycle. You might have that girlfriend in your life that she just really uh, is experiencing a lot of negative health and you know she's on hormonal birth control and maybe this is exactly what she needs to hear. Share this with her. Celebrate your strength and nourishment and walk in your confidence and I will catch you next week on another episode of Rebel Wellness. are still listening. Thank you for tuning in to our latest episode of Rebel Wellness. If you've been enjoying our conversations around health, fitness, and wellness, I have some exciting news for you. 
So if you would love to join our newsletter group, you can join us on coachkales.com or you can join my Stan store at stan.store backslash Kales, K-A-I-L-E-S. And that's an awesome opportunity for you to snag some freebies that I've created, including a macro hack grocery list that is going to help you kind of design a custom grocery list, especially for following macronutrients. Because as you know, if you didn't listen to my macros in May series, I would go back to those episodes because it has been a game changer for so many of our listeners for getting more on top of how to shape their physique and their health goals with the food they're eating. So don't sleep on that. Go get your free download. Or I also for fun have a little 14 day ab challenge that I actually have used with my clients and my clients have had some really surprising, amazing, well, surprising that only in 14 days, you can have such great progress with your core strength and your abdominal muscle tone in general. So that is also free on my Stan store. So again, S T A N like Stan, the man stand.store backslash kills. And you can also join our newsletter from that. And if you would like to reach out to me, chat, maybe work together, you can also contact me through my website, coachkales.com. And I would absolutely love you to join our Rebel Wellness Podcast Instagram, which is at Rebel Wellness Podcast. And you can also join my flagship coaching page at Coach by Kales. That's where it all began. That's where I share the most um, kind of custom to what I do work on specifically with my clients on that page. So join that one. It's all feminine wellness focused and I share some great stuff, some goofy stuff, things that you just don't want to miss as well as healthy recipes and things and easy recipes because we all kind of need some easy grab and go things, don't we? So I would love you to join both those pages as you'll be joining a community of like-minded females who are all committed to living their best lives. So hit that follow button. And I would love if you felt the need to share and rate our podcast. We would love that. Anyways, thanks for listening. And I hope to catch you next Sunday.
or say hello on the gram.